Then I want to show you uh, how to use a small number six, it's a worn out bristle brush, to slightly indicate some of the uh, subtle textures within the bread. And that'll, that'll add an interesting uh, dimension and richness to the surface. And then a little bit with the jaggedness, the jagged edge of the uh, front lines of the bread. We're going to take some of the uh, cool tone from the background and move it into the bread. Slightly vary the edge. So I mentioned earlier on you can take a brush. All, all this paint up here is all wet. I can take some of that tone on my smaller brush and use it to introduce into this wet paint here to show some of the subtle little textural indentations in the bread. And then I can move my brush back. And I don't mind what happens up here. I don't mind if an uh, element of abstraction appears up here within the brushwork and tonality. And I can take that and move it down like this. So just subtly uh, create this warm, cool relationship on a small scale. So once you get the foundation down like we have right now, it's just all about taking the various tonalities and moving them around. Grabbing paint from one spot and just moving it over to another. All right, let's experiment with some of the highlights on the jelly. So I'm gonna take a double O, very fine brush it's perfectly dry and just glob. I stick it right into the pile like that. And what you want to do is get the paint to sort of hang off in like a little tip like that. Let me hold this so you can see here. Just like that, this little tip. Just like that. Right there. So it just sort of hangs off. And we can take that and print real delicately down into the surface. We're going to take this double O brush and right here, these little jewel-like highlights, we're going to attempt to, you'll see me in a second, print down, just touch, not press down, but just touch a pinhead point of white and a few key areas within the foundation uh, uh, red-violet. So here we are close up. I can take my uh, brush and just like I was saying, press down. In some cases, you just you drag the little channel of paint around. Look at the subject. And it's better to understate than overstate with these highlights. It doesn't take much. You don't want to over scale the mark. I like to look at the mark, focus on the exact or approximate organic shape of the highlight, and then try to mimic that through a gesture. Get the quality, the quality of the mark. Then if you overdo a mark, you can take the bottom back of your brush and actually carve away the highlight. See here, I'm carving away the highlight. Moving it around. Then you can always take your... See here, we made a mistake, so we'll take a brush. We'll take another brush, like a number six. And just go back on top with the color of the jelly carve away the highlight. And I'm noticing there's a little bit of blue violet on the brush, which is fine. It adds a nice dimension to uh, the color of the jelly we've put down. Okay, we're going to end with a few final touches where the light hits the side here. I want to key up some of the yellow ochre yellow to bring out some of the light and a few of the warm spots. And then we'll move on to the next uh, demonstration. 
So a small amount of this uh, ochre. So a few spots, the very high parts of these clumps of peanut butter, I just want to introduce a higher key shape of yellow ochre. This is essentially tinted. Then I mentioned over here, some of this, bring in a little bit in here, just to key up part of it. And down here. It's interesting how the, the bread here, the light hitting the bread, is very similar to the, the value in light hitting the peanut butter. Be a little bit back here. And that is about it. Let's move on.